Welcome back to Pulmonary Crossover. This is my favorite segment because we want to stay current. Mark, what's up in the NBA? What do you have for us? All right, let's start off with the biggest one of them all, biggest news. Let's talk about the Cavs right now. Let's talk about their winning streak right now. What are your thoughts about it? 13-game winning streak? Yes. That's crazy. The king really deserves his throne. Like, just seeing... First of all, I just want to touch the, touch the fact that Cleveland, when you look at them, you don't think of a defensive team. No. You don't think of a defensive team. Kevin Love is their center. Love, like, yeah, exactly. So shout out, to, protect the rim. shout out to LeBron really <laughs> carrying it because he's playing outstanding minutes. He's playing really good minutes, and he's closing the game most of all. That game so, against Sacramento and Memphis, that's mm. two of the games that he showed that he's clutch. Mm -hmm. No one should forget about the fact that he's not just the best all-around player right now, but he's one of the clutch players. Mm. And, you know, everyone talks about Lillard or uh, uh, Kevin Durant being clutch players, but no one mentions LeBron, and he just showed him two who, games right now to keep their streak uh, going, right? Yeah. Who do you think is the most like helpful to LeBron, I guess, in this situation? I think it's, it's been Kevin Love, the fact mm. that um, no one has been talking about it. It's just a shame because mm. he's, he's playing all-star. Like, he's playing like an all-star again like he was, and, and he's able to do it. Be I think it's helping to the fact that Rose is out and Tristan Thompson is out is that they have, and Isaiah Thomas is out. They, have proved, uh, they basically have defined his role saying that you're the second option in this, in this, in this team right now. And, you be, and, and he's shown, and I think he accepted the fact that, yeah, I'm going to play center, I'm going to get banged a lot, mm -hmm. but I'm the second option and I got to play like a second option type of player. And then yeah. that's what he's been doing the past 13 games that they've been winning. Mm -hmm. okay. So... What but, happened? What happened with Tristan Thompson? In the, uh, he had a he had a he had a strain calf, so he's injured and he's coming back soon. But I know D Rose is coming back soon. What about uh, what about Dwayne Wade? What are your thoughts right now with him leading the second unit right now and being that spark off the bench? I think I think it's a veteran move. Yeah. I think for him to understand and to be aware that that's where he needs to be and to really come off the bench and stay strong and to really set an example to the whole team like to all the other like um, no matter players. how many championships exactly won, and he's many... a future hall of famer <laughs> exactly so to have someone on your team to say that i'll sacrifice that for the good of the team and to know that I'll, i'm okay with coming off the bench i think that speaks volumes of his character and just the leadership that him and lebron can bring to the whole team in general exactly. i think it's an intangible yeah, like, it, it's good to have yeah. like uh, someone like Dewey Wayne who knows exactly, right? Mm -hmm. But about the fact that um, uh, LeBron right now statistically is having the best season of his career in terms of shooting, shooting 58% and 41%, mm. 58 from the field and 41% from the three-point line. He's, he's having the best statistical of his career and he's doing it in, a fifth, in his 15th season. That's this is around the same time a lot of people, a lot of players back in the day like Jordan are retiring. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this? Like, I think this is... I think the way he's playing, I think he can still play even longer. Like he's so durable as a player, he takes really good care of, of his body. I saw an article that he spent. I don't know. I don't know if that was a real article, but it said he spends like 1.5 mil on his body alone. Yeah. So it just shows how dedicated he is to his craft. You don't see anything bad about him in the media. He's just so you know. Put together as a player and he want, knows what he wants it's right? just hard to believe that someone at their 15th season is, is still the best player in a league where you have kids that are uh, you know half of his age or like not half but i mean like 10 or 12 years younger than he is just starting out i mean if you have guys like you know Embiid and porzingis Giannis, curry durant right there at their prime playing or just emerging as an all-star and you still have lebron at the age of 33 the best player in the league. That just speaks volume. Then, and I think it's opening up a lot of questions whether he's the best player in the end of all time. The and, goat. And I think he's goat? opening. He's, he's starting to goat? open it up because it, it to to have this kind of performance at your 15th season. That we everyone thought he's gonna he he hit his peak and he's about to basically trend slowly <laughs> down, but it's he's kind of still going up. going up still, His three right? points are getting better. It's like he's, a, he's like getting tips from Kyle Korver or something. Exactly. His three points better. He's closing. Yeah. It's crazy. And what do you think about like Isaiah Thomas situation? What's your take on when Isaiah Thomas comes? Do they need Isaiah Thomas? What do you think? They, 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 they do. They do. But mm -hmm. the fact, I want him to understand that LeBron is not going to be able to carry this load for 82 games. Mm -hmm. And, and they need to have someone to kind of get that off his, uh, get the scoring low off his back. And, and, and it's good to have Isaiah Thomas when he comes in, 
with LeBron, he can be the facilitator, you know, let LeBron play off the ball, get him, you know, scoring. But when LeBron comes off, that's when IT becomes IT. You know, that's what he, let him do what he did in Boston, which is scary, you know, the scoring low. And that's what he can do when LeBron comes off the, uh, get, gets off the court and mm -hmm. he can take over and play IT like he did. Mm -hmm. in, in the hopes that he's at least 90, 80 to 90% of what he was, right? Cleveland or so, Boston? Uh, I'm going to still, I'm going to, I'm, from now, I think Boston still has the, uh, I'm thinking Boston just because they're deeper. Mm -hmm. Not in a sense of, I think they, they're younger. But LeBron is, if he, LeBron continues to play like this, it's not even close. Mm -hmm. I'm just, in a sense, uh, playing through the fact that Boston is younger. You, and like, they just, have Kyrie. you like Tatum. You're biased. I'm a big Tatum, Tatum fan. So. <laughs> All right, let's go to your other point, which is, which is another team. What's yeah. the focus on? We but we're going, about. this one is going the other way around. So now. we went from this good teams to. A good team, but this is to the end. Like, okay. uh, I wanted to touch upon it because uh, I feel like, you know, the Memphis Grizzlies has been a staple playoff team for a very long time. Mm. And I feel like this is the end of the grit and grind era. So I want to see, what are your thoughts about this? The end of an era uh, of a team that's been a staple playoff team for the past <laughs> six, seven years. <laughs> but we went from a 13-game win streak to how, how much did they lose? Nine, nine games. Nine games? Before they and, snapped it recently. And obviously it's because of the injuries and Conley not playing. Yeah. And I know, I don't know. I feel like it's kind of a clipper situation. Like it's, you got, do I want to say it? Do the, do, I, I think they should tank. I think they should tank. For, to me, they should tank their cap, their yeah. cap space. Like Chandler Parsons on a really bad contract. Yeah, like, it's been highly criticized, right? And, and 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 a lot of it has to, you know, there was a bigger news too with the fact that happened in Grizzlies, which was Fizdale's firing. Like mm. a lot of people, a lot of you know, uh, anal NBA sports analysis like Stephen A. Smith, a lot of coaches have criticized the Memphis Grizzlies because they've done this three three or four times yeah. to the coaches that That's had true. really good coaching record and that was really good in terms of, um, you know, keeping them winning, uh, a winning team. Like they did it with Lionel Horace, D uh, Dave Yeager, and now they're doing it to a guy like Fisdale who carried this, you know, who coached this team really well last year and, and it stood up for his players, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and this comes into question because of how Marcus Gasol and him never really got along. So... Now that Fisdale is gone and Conley, they're on a losing streak and, and Gasol basically is on, a uh, on this middle, you know, where he's been basically asked, you know, how is your relationship with Fisdale? And because of that, they're speculating that he was, gonna, he was the reason why he was, you know, fired. Do you think that Mark Gasol is the kind of player you want to keep building around with? Or I don't know. is it time to trade him? Because this right. is the most value you can get from him. That's true. Well, I, if you were to ask me that now with the direction that the NBA is going, I feel like his position and his skill set is starting to weigh out. Like, it, it, yeah. Him playing defense outside is kind of scary. He can't really guard outside. He's too slow. Like, yeah. it, and the thing is, like, mo it isn't most of the team before they were looking for a center that had his skill set. Mm. But now a lot of big men nowadays are even more skilled than he was, and now he's becoming kind of less valuable. Do you feel like, you know, maybe not just him, but move on from the whole the team, whole the whole, because they, didn't, they don't new? really have any assets besides, yeah. if you think about it, Gasol and Conley, who else do they have? Does anybody know who they have as a player? No. Besides Chandler Parson, but he is the most, you know, criticized player for, but I don't think he was his fault. If you think about it, they signed him to that hundred million dollar contract. He got payday. He was, it's not his fault that mil. injuries came into him, yeah. right? Because they knew that he had at least two surgeries on his knee before they signed him. So that was the risk that they're willing mm -hmm. to take. But my other thing is to, should they trade Conley? What about if they can't get much value from Gasol, should they trade Conley? Maybe they can get better maybe better young core, maybe young players or draft picks? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, I think right now, it's, uh, I feel like they should rebuild. I think they're in the same situation as the Clippers. I mm -hmm. think it's hard for them to recover from it. Mm -hmm. um, again, the coaching change in like, not even the middle of the season, but really early on, is going to just affect their play. And, and in, like, in general, they don't seem like they're going to be moving up or they have it's any high prospects, so might as well... Kind of it's like, hard. Like I, I can't blame the firing of Fisdale, but they got rid of their veterans too that kept them, yeah. like Randolph, Tony Allen, and Vince Carter. They had a very good, you know, uh, very good team, but not good enough really to make it far. Mm. And I feel like this is the end of the grit and grind so era. So tanker trade, tanker um, trade. Well, it's just gr end the grit and grind era and just rebuild. Rebuild because the they can't. Where else are they gonna go? 
West is just too <laughs> tough. It's too West is too the tough to have just West. Gasol and Conley. Don't play. Yeah. All right. We're I guess we're ending. We're nearing the end of the show. Anything you'd like to say? Any shout outs you'd like to give before we end up? Shout outs to our you know Pinoy crossover uh, fans right there on our Instagram and our YouTube. Twitter and Facebook page, you guys have been awesome. We've been highlighting a lot of, you know, uh, since we've been active more on uh, Instagram, we've been uh, watching a lot of kids that are following us and they've been giving us a shout out. We've been highlighting their mixtapes too. If you guys have some really cool mixtapes or you want someone to show us, feature us, come through because we see it and we want you guys to come over. We had, a, you know, uh, one guest is coming soon who we feature on our Instagram and we want to come over here we don't want to tell you yet. It's going to be a surprise. So keep, <laughs> stay tuned. All right, guys. Shout out to everyone. Keep watching us. Keep commenting. Follow all our social media platforms. 